Do you know how incredibly frustrating it is when the world's most valuable tech company that has endless resources, endless manpower, endless funding, hell, endless time to just put anyone you want on any project to make it right? Just seems like they can't do anything except fuck shit up. Yeah, in video we're talking about you and your fuckery that you continue to evolve and surprise us. It's like every time you think NVIDIA can't fuck up more than they already have, they go, you haven't seen anything yet. Introducing the SoCal Tech Fair taking place May 3rd and 4th. This is something I've been wanting to do for many years and we're finally doing it. So we've teamed up with iBuyPower and Height to create a community event where we're gonna have live music, we're gonna have tech panels, we're gonna have tech game shows up on stage. Other content creators are gonna be joining me. We're gonna have a tech swap meet too where we'll be selling uh, our lightly used parts that would definitely serve other people better than they're serving us sitting on our shelves. So we're trying to give you some good deals. We got food, we got games, we got activities, we've got a lot of sponsors and brands that are involved. We even have some racing simulators later set up where you can win prizes and stuff. So for full ticket and uh, event information, check the link in the description below and we hope to see you there. All right, you may or may not have heard about this over the weekend. There is another driver problem with NVIDIA. Not, that's my foot on the chair. So you might have heard of some of the recent driver problems that started affecting 50 series people and then 40 series after that where they would go to black screen and sometimes a driver wipe would bring it back and other people had extreme scenarios where their cards never came back from the dead. Today we're going to talk about driver, what is it, 576.02, which you should absolutely not touch for any reason whatsoever. So this one is, is interesting. It is affecting graphics cards that when they go to sleep and wake back up, the temperature value is no longer updating. It'll just show the last number it saw at the time that it went to sleep. And that doesn't seem like that big of an issue. It seems more like a bug, but it's actually a bug that can be causing you some serious problems depending on how you have your system configured. So let's talk about a couple of different scenarios here where this could affect you. Um, if you've just thrown your graphics card on the bench and haven't done any custom fan curves or anything like that, this will be more of an annoyance where if you're trying to, if you have a sensor panel and you're trying to monitor the temperatures, uh, it just will, it won't update. You come back from sleep or hibernation, the number will just say 32 or 50 or wherever the temp was when it went to sleep. And no matter what games you run or what fan curves you apply or anything, uh, the temperature will always stay at 52 or wherever the temperature was that you last saw. That's more of an annoyance. More of a severe problem would be if you're running, say, a custom fan curve in something like Afterburner, where Afterburner relies on the temperature value updating to be able to control the fan curve outside of what the vBIOS fan curve is telling the fans to do. The third scenario here would be like one where Phil is finding himself, and actually I find myself as well, which is where you have a fully water-cooled system. There's no more fans on the graphics card at all, so the graphics card is not handling its cooling at all whatsoever, and you use something like uh, fan control to control your fans, and you use the temperature sensor that's found on the GPU to maybe ramp up your fans and slow down based on CPU usage, GPU usage. We've done all of those uh, types of videos showing you how to set that up. Well, if that value that temperature value is not updating in the software, then the fans will never do anything. Now in a water-cooled system, it wouldn't be an extreme problem. You just notice it running more like air-cooled temps are, are a little warmer without the fans ramping up because the radiators still give enough passive cooling. But if you're running an air-cooled card and you put a custom fan curve on it, it, especially if you have one that's set to like a zero dB kind of a fan curve and you start gaming, uh, your temperatures are gonna be pretty high. Now, if I go ahead and just start for Mark, you can see the temperature is updating in real time, right? 59, 60, 61. You can see our fans have responded as they're expected to based on this temperature curve. Now, let's go ahead and say you're one of those people that leave your computer on all the time and you set a sleep mode or whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and mimic that right now. We'll just go sleep. So as you can see, our system is now asleep, which is uh, denoted by a blinking power button. So we'll turn our system back on. You just came back from school or work or whatever. You're like, ah. Long day of stressful day, I want to game now, or I want to go to my favorite 18 and over website, and I just want to unwind a little bit. Now check out our temperature right here. It is not ramping up at all. Now our fan curve is still ramping up because we are using the vBIOS fan curve. So we're not, it's not paying any attention at all to the temperature sensor in Afterburner, so that's why the fan's coming up, but look at the temperatures. They are not updating anymore at all. So now if we were using the GPU's fan temperature uh, sensor to control fan control or any other third-party software that 
oh, I don't know, like a lot of the, the, the hubs and stuff that have their own built-in software to attach fans to, like NZXT has one. Um, I think Height even has like a way to integrate other fans and stuff into there. If it's using this, this temperature sensor, your fans are not gonna ramp up. Now our temperatures are still fine on this GPU because it's not using a custom fan curve. But here's the weird part. If we do GPU Z, it actually does see the correct temperatures if you go into the sensors panel. So that tells us there's actually more than one temperature sensor or at least a way that it's accessed so that we, like the GPU knows what it's doing. Look, it says 70.5 C right there. There's no hotspot temp on the 50 series. So we wanted to test this specifically because we thought maybe on 40 series and below it was using hotspot temperature to kind of control the fans. But since that doesn't exist, or at least it's not visible to us on this GPU, you can see it's still controlling its fan speeds uh, and it's still seeing temperatures. But if we compare that to Afterburner, it still shows the 39 degrees, which is where it was when it went to sleep. Now check this out. But let's say I have like a really aggressive, like, hey, let's stay, let's stay really silent. The fans are actually slowing down. Now look at our temperature. It's climbing, right? 79.1, 79.3, 79.5. Because because obviously these fans are never gonna go any faster than like the 30% we have set. Now this, this might not seem like that big of a deal, but it is if you set yourself an aggressive fan curve that say stays at zero dB until, oh, I don't know, 40, 45 C, and you went to sleep at 30 C, it'll never turn the fans back on while you're gaming, unless you finally hit that TJ Maxx like value, then the fans will just say, fuck the fan curve, go to 100%, save it from melting down, which eventually will happen here, potentially with this particular test, but like our memory is now at 90. Our GPU is now 83.7. It will just continue to climb until eventually it hits that. But if I was to just now go back to the auto curve, whoa. So as you can see, it does have an actual real impact on your performance potential. Look, we're over 2,900 megahertz now. And look at the memory temp. I mean, it's crazy, right? They're already down to 76 C. So the only way to fix this problem now would be to do a full system restart. Now here's some recommendations. Obviously you need some recommendations to kind of figure out how to stay away from this problem. One, the most screwed people in this instance right now are gonna be 5060 Ti owners because this is technically the public facing 5060 Ti driver. If you have that card and you have this driver, pay attention to these recommendations. Uh, if you don't have a 5060 Ti, just roll back one previous driver. I don't think any games have come out recently that require a game ready driver to be able to get full optimization of a game. So just roll back one driver, stay off 576.02. It is horseshit. Um, the other thing I would do is if you are on a 5060 Ti or if you have a, and you, for whatever reason, can't roll back your driver, you're gonna have to remove any sort of fan control slash afterburner curve for it to actually work. Now it's gonna suck if you're on a water cooled system and you're kind of relying on that. At that point, I would just set your fans to maybe a manual tolerant audible, like decibel level that you can tolerate your fans and just let it run like that full time until this is fixed. Uh, but yeah, now if you are the kind of person that keeps your system on and lets it go to sleep, no point in doing that anymore. You might as well shut it down because anytime you come back from a restart, it's gonna work. But if it ever goes to sleep or hibernates, that's gonna be a problem. Now we're not talking about your monitor turning off. That's a different power state versus letting your system hibernate or go to sleep. Now this is one of those scenarios that is most widely uh, kind of experienced as being sleep related. However, you can find posts on Reddit of one of the initial Redditors that kind of brought this up stating his acted this way from the moment the driver was installed where the fan curve wouldn't work and the temperature never updated. It didn't matter if it went to sleep or not. It was just that way from boot number one. So you might be experiencing an even more severe situation like that. Now I can't, I, I, I don't understand the scenario behind that one. Clearly there's, there's something in the code there that is forced into by a sleep hibernate and then his particular system parameters in some way is triggering that from the start once the driver is initialized. But that's neither here nor there. Here's my question to Nvidia. Why'd you touch that shit? Why? Of all the drivers that you've ever made, who decided, you know, this code in here on the temperature sensor refresh after hibernate, we should go in there and fiddle with that. Look, I come from a software development background and I'm telling you right now, I cannot for the life of me understand a scenario on drivers that are just iterations of previous drivers well, that suddenly becomes a thing you gotta go in and fuck with. It makes no sense whatsoever. This driver has been out since April 16th. It is today the 21st of April. There is no reason for the last five days this driver is still live on your site. 
Why? Because Nvidia refuses to ever admit fault for anything. Nvidia doesn't believe it fucks up. Nvidia doesn't even believe that they, not only does their shit not stink, they don't shit to begin with. But guess what, Nvidia? You're now literally the benchmark of what constitutes horseshit today. AMD, although they have a lot less competition in terms of like being able to actually show up to the race, has provided the most stable, the most easy to use and smoothest gaming experience we've had in this entire GPU refresh this season. The drivers have been solid. The benchmarks have been back-to-back -back run variants within 1%. Guess what? I don't know if your driver team jump shipped to AMD somehow, somewhere, but y'all need to get this shit under a tighter leash because this is the kind of fucked up stuff that doesn't have to happen and it almost feels like it's on purpose by design in some way. It's almost like you're prodding to say, how much can we get away with? How much can we just fuck the consumer before they really truly push back? That's the only thing I'm left with. I cannot for the life of me understand a scenario in which this ever had to be messed with whatsoever. Like, I don't even know how many people's systems out there right now. People are trying to figure out why the heck their games are stuttering and lagging and stuff because they don't realize they're actually hitting thermal limits because some junior dev or some shit somewhere got to fuck with some code they didn't belong in. And if that's not the case, that's an even worse problem because that means you have experienced people out there fucking shit up.